Hey, lovely people. So, I have finished writing a first draft of my third novel, Ercadura. Well, um, I continue thinking it's my third novel because um, Siren Suicides, my first trilogy, was kind of like one novel that grew into three. Even though it's three books, it's really one to me. Rosehead is with my editor. It should be edited soon. And this one is the third. It's a literary novel. It's based on my experiences growing up in Soviet Union and being a teenager right on the cusp of constitutional crisis. Um, I've never written anything literary before. Very, very scared. Um, need your feedback. First draft is posted on my website. You can go and take a look at it and read it and uh, let me know what you think. Also, I'm doing this to kind of pull myself out of some sort of depression because I'm in between drafts. I'm not supposed to write. I'm supposed to take a break and I'm going crazy, crazy, crazy. So anyway, let me read it to you and you tell me what you think. And chapter one, Dura. Irka stopped talking the moment she learned how to talk. It was a sunny day. She just got done peeing into a pot and waddled over to her mother, panty pulling. Dua, she said brightly. Only two, Irka couldn't roll a proper Russian R yet. Dua, Dua, she heard the word Dura often, not knowing that it meant female fool under the best of the circumstances. Under the worst of the circumstances, it meant retarded bitch. And that's how it was used in Marinova household, comprised entirely of women. Irka's mother, aunt, cousin, grandmother, and great-grandmother all crammed into a three-bedroom flat on the last floor of a Soviet apartment building. Dua, 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 Irka poked the snoring shape on the mattress. Marina Marinova grunted and opened one eye. Her normal morning started with a couple bottles of Zhigulovska beer. Money ran scarce this month, and she couldn't afford her hangover remedy, suffering the consequences in the form of a blinding headache. The sun didn't help. Marina sat, reeling. Dua, Dua, Irka chanted on repeat, clapping hands, her little feet doing a little dance, as much as fallen panties permitted. What? Marina blinked. Dua, said Irka uncertainly. In her short life, she learned to recognize her mother's tone of voice, predicting the future with astounding accuracy. It went down two paths, bad and not so bad. Comprehension down on Marina's face. Chotis Kazala? What'd you say? Dura? I'll show you, Dura. Her movements, sharp, swift and precise, indicated years of practice. Irka flew across the room, slammed into the pot, and knocked it over. She bit at her tongue, hard. Warm urine seeped into her shirt. A shadow blocked the sunlight. Irka instinctively covered. Later, she didn't remember how she got beaten, or for how long. Fortunately, toddler memory blotted out most of its contents, but the time Irka turned 16. She did remember one thing, the garish orange curtains, the way the threads hung off the frayed bottom, the way they flapped and rhythm to her mother's fists. Since she couldn't stand the orange things, since then she couldn't stand the orange things, and she stopped talking, for good. At first, due to swollen tongue, then out of terror, then out of sheer habit. Irka learned that being quiet had its advantages. One, women in her family stopped bothering her, thinking her an idiot and nicknaming her Irka Dura. Two, men got bored of her faster. What do they always want with me? I'm so ugly, thought Irka. She hated her mousy hair, her midget height, her sizable boobs, and her ass that developed way too early. School uniforms never fit her, and boys constantly attempted to lift her skirt to see what panties she wore. She ignored them with stubborn silence. It was nothing compared to what she endured at home. To remedy their financial situation, Marina occasionally brought home men, picking them up like stray dogs, the filthiest, the smelliest, and the hairiest she could find. None of them lasted long, kicked out a few weeks by sharp glares and colorful words by Nadezhda Marinova. Irka's great-grandmother. In one case, she successfully used the broom as an aid to convince a particularly stubborn specimen. With years, Nadezhda's health deteriorated and she spent her days in bed, shuffling out only to use a bathroom or drink tea. Irka's grandmother, Valentina, Vala for short, 
turned a bland eye on her daughter's antiques, camping out with Sonia, Irka's aunt, and Lenichka, Irka's younger cousin, in an adjacent room, complete with three cats, two dogs, a rat, and a hedgehog. This left only one room for Irka to share with her mother, and, subsequently, with any man she brought home. All of them took ample advantage of this fact, using Irka as a convenient needy pet, until they tired of both women, stole whatever was worth stealing, and disappeared, leaving Marina drunk and wailing. All except Lyosha Ivanenka, who stuck. He showed up at the door one day, flowers in one hand, a sack of vodka in another, a butcher who spent last three years in prison for thievery and just got discharged. He became Marina's glorious achievement in finding the lowest scum on the streets of Moscow, the likes of which didn't exist in the recently disbanded Soviet Union, according to its newspapers and television. Yerka was 15. Her bust burst out of the bra that didn't fit anymore. Her body showed through the hand-me-down housecoat. Lyosha's eyes glinted. To a certain his fatherly position, on the very first night, he pumped Marina with alcohol until she passed out then pressed Irka into a corner and fondled her with a sick grin. He did it in their room, but with time grew bold, handling her in the kitchen in plain view. Old Nadezhda, the only woman who would have given Lyosha a piece of her mind, barely showed her face. Vala, of course, turned a blind eye, coming home late and leaving early for her nursing job. Sonia and Yenichka were gone to meet young men qualified for a potential marriage. The only positive change Lyosha brought was forcing all Marinovo women to stop walking around the house in underwear or playing naked. And so, unchallenged, he stayed for a whole year, spending his days watching small black and white TV, drinking vodka, singing post-war songs, and fondling Marina in the kitchen while she cooked, winking at Irka every time she happened to look. It signified the oncoming of her nightly regimen. Marina served as an appetizer. Irka's body was what interested Lyosha most, her ripe breasts, her fleshy thighs, and the lack of virginity between them, taken a long time ago by one of Marina's passing boyfriends. When? Irka couldn't remember. Resistance never crossed her mind, trained to give up her body for the use of others. Either as a punching bag or as a source of pleasure, she turned herself numb and escaped into her head. Irka grew up with three types of touch hitting, groping, and sinking of filthy limbs into her very being, making her want to puke. She always contained the urge, emptying her stomach after, while crouched over the toilet bowl on the cold floor. None of the episodes lasted long anyway, the potency of her mother's boyfriends fluctuating roughly between a few jerks to a couple minutes at the most, that is, if they could get it up after drinking for hours. Not the case with Dosha. He happened to maintain both the boar's stamina and looks, or perhaps his job of slaughtering pigs rubbed off on his personality. Over the course of the year, Irka's patience ran ragged until one night he hurt her so bad that something snapped on her. She couldn't stand it any longer and decided to run. Well, that's it. And I gotta show you, I'm wearing this t-shirt today. That says, uh, writing books is my motor and reading is my fuel. Um, I don't know, this silly thing, the video thing is showing it to me kind of like a mirror reflection backwards. Uh, left to right, whatever you want to call it. Or something. Anyway, um, here you go. This was the first chapter of Irka Dura, first draft. It's, of course, terrible, as all first drafts are supposed to be shit. Um... So, if you want to give me feedback this week, you have time before I start writing second draft and hopefully can make it better based on your feedback or, you know, just hopefully had a um, good time listening to it. Till next time, bye.